Well, hello. Here we are again, and we're still working on radicals. Only now the problems are a bit more involved. For instance, here we're going to be simplifying radicals, but we're adding them. All right, our goal here is to simplify each radical and each radical expression as much as we can. Okay, so, and here's the answer. So let's check this out. Eight. Well, be nice if I wouldn't mess that up, eh? Okay. Eight times the square root of 12. Now, I know the square root of 12. I mean, I know 12, right? 12 is one times 12, two times six, and four times three. Be quiet, phone. Be quiet. What does it take? Excuse me while I, oh, turn my phone down. How about, how about this? I am going to put it on, uh, Airplane mode. There now. That should take care of that noisy phone that just wants attention. Oh, yes. So I was breaking down 12 into its factor pairs. This is the only one that contains a perfect square. So that's what I'm going to use. Eight times the square root of four times three. And we might as well continue with that before we go to the other one. So let's see, this will be eight times the square root of four times the square root of three. The square root of four is two, so this will be eight times two times the square root of three. So eight times the square root of 12 will be 16 times the square root of three. Now, let me put some pluses down here. We're going to go to two times the square root of 108. And I admit, I am not that familiar with 108. So, this is what I'm go going to do. I'm just going to break it down. I know 1 times 108, 2 times 54. Okay, now I know. You know why? Because 54 equals 9 times 6. But that would be too easy, wouldn't it? because, let's just break it down the whole way. Um, three, let me find my color again. Three times, um, um, okay, I give up. 108, well, yeah, 108 divided by three is what? 108 divided by three is 36. So three times 36 and four times, well, four into 108, 108 divided by four is 27. Well, five doesn't go, that's for sure, because 108, 108 ends in an eight and five doesn't go evenly into an eight. Okay, so we'll skip that. But six, I think it's six times 18. Let's make sure. 
108 divided by 6, it's 18, yes. Now 7 might go in, let's see. 108 divided by 7. Nope, definitely does not. But what about 8? 108 divided by 8. Nope, it's got a decimal. All right, well, 108 divided by 9. I know that 9 will go in. Yeah, 9 times 12. Ten, no, eleven, no, but twelve. Okay, they start to turn around again. So these are just factor pairs, though. I'm going to need more than that, or am I? Thirty-six is a perfect square. I'm so stuck on nine. Three times thirty-six. That's what we're going to use. 2 times the square root of 36 times 3. And that will be 2 times the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. And that will be 2 times 6 times the square root of 3, which is 12 times the square root of 3. Now notice we can factor out a GCF here. Both of these terms contain the square root of three. So usually I pull my GCF out to the front, but this time I'm going to pull it out to the back and you'll see why. My leftovers are 16 plus 12. 6 times 2 is 8, 1 plus 1 is 2, not 6 times 2. 6 plus 2 is 8, 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is 28 times the square root of 3. And there's my answer. It's, it's always much better to break things down into their component parts, especially when those things are numbers or expressions. Let's try another one. But before we do that, look at what you do. You go step by step, breaking down into perfect squares. And sometimes you do have to go to some trouble and other times you might know the answer right away. It all depends. All right, this is like that. Let's do it again. 11 times 72. Okay, 72 equals 1 times 72, there's no perfect square there. 2 times 36 though, da 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 da, 72 divided by 2 is 36. 36 is a perfect square. So we have this now. 11 times the square root of 72 plus 5 times the square root of 18. Now you know 9 is a perfect square and you know that 18 is 2 times 9. So that's pretty easy for you. This on the other hand, ah yes, I'm going to use 2 times 36. So 11 times the square root of 36 times 2 plus 5 times the square root of 9 times 2. Well, that will be 11 times the square root of 36 times the square root 
of 2 plus 5 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 36 is 6, so 11 times 6 times the square root of 2 plus 5 times the square root of 9, which is 3, so 5 times 3 times the square root of 2. So I'll have 66 times the square root of 2 plus five, 15 times the square root of 2. And then I'll factor out the GCF square root of 2 backwards. So I can have my integers in front. Just makes it easier to write the final answer. 66 plus 15. Oh, we could do it by hand, but let's do it in the calculator. 66 plus 15 is 81. 81 times the square root of 2. Now I know 81 is a perfect square, but it's not under a square root sign. So in this case, 81 is just 81. Oh yeah, and there it is. Oh my goodness, look at this. We can do this though. Seven times the square root of 12 minus the square root of 300. Now that happens to be very, very easy, even though it looks like it's go going to be difficult. Okay, 12 is four times three. You will have that memorized. Minus. 100 is a perfect square. 100 times 3 is 300. Plus, 27 is 9 times 3. So the square root of 9 times 3. So now we write it all out. 7 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 100 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And that will be 7 times 2 times the square root of 3 minus 10 times the square root of 3, because the square root of 100 is 10, plus the square root of 9 is 3, so we'll have 3 times the square root of 3. Now, very handily, each term has a square root of 3 in it, so I'll pull it out to the back and then pull the, put the leftovers in the parentheses in front. Seven times two is 14 minus 10 plus three. 14 minus 10 is four plus three is seven. No. <gasps> Look what I did. I forgot to put the six in front. Yeah, that'll change things. There. So yeah, there's a six in front of the square root of 27, which means there'll be six, we will have six times three times the square root of three, which means 18. 18 is going to go 
right there. Now let's try this again. 14 minus 10 is 4. 4 plus 18 is 22. And we multiply that by the square root of 3. And that's my answer. Let's see, did I forget one? Yes, I did. I needed to put a blue answer box around that. And I know I did it on the first one. I think I did it, yes. Okay, we have added and subtracted and simplified. Now let's move on. We're going to multiply radical expressions. We have the square root of seven parentheses, five minus eight times the square root of seven. So I'm going to distribute. I'll have five times the square root of seven minus eight times the square root of seven times the square root of seven. Well, note, the square root of seven times the square root of seven is the square root of seven squared. Now remember how you, um, how you find a square root or the equivalent statement uh, using rational exponents. Remembering there's an invisible two right here. The index to the square to a square root is two. This equals this two divided by that two in the exponent position. 2 over 2 is 1, so this is 7 to the 1, which is 7. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7 with no radical. Meanwhile, let's check this out. Oh, let's check this out. This is going to be 8 times 7, and this is going to be 5 times the square root of 7. So we'll have 5 times the square root of 7 minus 56. Piece of cake, right? Let me write this bigger just so you can see it. And anyone else looking at this. This is going to be seven to the two over two. That will give me seven to the one power, which is seven. Now, or you could just memorize, but that's no fun. So here's our, our answer. Now, we're going to multiply the square root of a plus the square root of seven in parentheses, times the square root of a plus the square root of two. How do we do that? Here's how. I take the square root of, I don't like that little cross mark though. The square root of a times this set of parentheses, the square root of a plus the square root of two. 
now plus the square root of seven, bring it over here, parentheses, the square root of a plus the square root of two. Once I have this step, I can distribute and distribute and distribute and distribute. So here I go. The square root of A times the square root of A plus the square root of A times the square root of two plus the square root of seven times the square root of a plus the square root of seven times the square root of two. And then what will that be? This will be the square root of a squared, and this will be the square root of two a, and this will be the square root of 7a. And this will be the square root of 14. I think a fly just ran into my coffee. Didn't run, flew into my coffee. There you go. Now you may hear the sirens. You're going to hear sirens for all my videos because I live <laughs> I live 3 blocks from a firehouse. Yeah, it's an interesting place to live in. Okay, now I have one more thing to work on here. The square root of a squared. Well, we could do what we did before. The square root of a squared equals index two. I mean, that's always there. It's just invisible. Then I find the equivalent statement in exponential notation. Well, two over two is one, so I'll have a to the one, and a to, a to the one is a. Or you could just memorize. Yeah, go ahead and do it. The square root of a squared is a. And that's just the way it is. Now this won't break down anymore. This won't break down anymore. This won't break down anymore. So that's how they got their answer a right there. Square root of 2a plus the square root of 7a plus the square root of 14. These are similar, but they're not exactly alike. They're both square roots. They both have a's in them, but the coefficients of the a's are different. So I can't combine them. Otherwise, I would love to. Now we're going to multiply. Oh, we've been multiplying. Now we're going to square. So let's square. Yes, we're not through multiplying yet. Seven plus the square root of six squared is 7 plus the square root of 6 times 7 plus the square root of 6. Everybody would love to say 7 squared plus the square root of 6 squared. 
That would be 49 plus 6, which would be 55. Yeah. But no, <laughs> that's not the answer. Because of that plus sign, you can't do what you want to do because plus signs, plus signs and minus signs always get in the way. It's a terrible thing. This is what I was talking about. If you had seven times the square root of six squared, that would be seven squared times the square root of six squared. So I would have 49 times six not plus six, times six. So, 49 times six is 294. Oh, and let me show you this. When you have this, it's the same thing as having this. In fact, you can take your choice. It's one of the great things about radicals. Sometimes they let you cheat, but not here. Now, we have to do this the long way. So I'm going to do that. I'll pull down the 7, multiply by 7 plus the square root of 6, and then plus the square root of six here. This is, this is the seven right there. And then plus the square root of six goes right here, plus the square root of six times seven plus the square root of six. Then we distribute. Seven times seven is 49, plus seven times the square root of six is seven times the square root of six, plus the square root of six times seven is plus <clears throat> seven times the square root of six. That's the way we write it plus the square root of six times the square root of six, which is the square root of six squared. So we're going to have 49 plus 14 times the square root of six. You've got seven square roots of six. You add another seven square roots of six plus six. Now, 49 plus 6 is 55, plus 14 times the square root of 6. Now, you go over this carefully and you'll see. Now, this is very interesting and look at that interesting little answer. These are conjugates. You've got two sets of parentheses, the square root of 10 and the square root of 10. The square root of 8 and the square root of 8. A minus and a plus. They're identical except for the sign between them. Well, except for the sign between the two terms. Here we have a minus, here we have a plus. These are conjugates. And they always work wonderful magic for us. And they're going to work wonderful magic for us again. OK, the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 10 
squared. The square root of 10 times the square root of 8, oh, times plus the square root of 8, is plus the square root of 80. Now, minus the square root of 8 times the square root of 10 is minus the square root of 80. And minus the square root of 8 times plus the square root of 8 is going to be minus the square root of 8 squared. Pretty cool. Here we have the square root of 80 minus the square root of 80. Well, that's zero. The square root of 10 squared is 10. The square root of 8 squared Yeah, yeah, I needed to put a minus there, didn't I? Yes, I did. Why did I do that? I don't know. Maybe I was trying to be smart. Minus the square root of 8 squared is 8. So you've got 10 plus 0 minus 8, which is 2. And that is the magic of, of conjugates. I love conjugates. Now we're going to divide. Division is a little bit trickier because you're not allowed to have a radical, a root sign on the, in the denominator of a fraction, on the bottom of a fraction. You're just not allowed to. Nice people don't do it. So let's see what you have to do. We've got the square root of 11 over 2. So we have to recognize that this is the square root of 11 over the square root of 2. This is not allowed. There's a trick called multiplying by one. And I get to use the choose, I, I get to choose the form of one that I need. Here I go. The square root of 11 over the square root of two times one, and the form it's going to take is the square root of two over the square root of two. Anytime you have identical numerators and denominators, the answer is one. But now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the square root of 11 times the square root of two. That will give me the square root of 22 and the square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of two squared, or if you like, the square root of four. So that's going to be the square root of 22 over the square root of four is two. Now you can't divide a number outside the radical into a radical. So forget that. This is your answer, and that's as far as it goes. Now, let's try this. This is the same kind of problem. The square root of 10 over the square root of seven. No, well, it is that, but it's not how we start out. The square, I, I did it again. That's because that's the first step after you write it down. 
the square root of 10 over 7 is the square root of 10 over the square root of 7. Can't have a radical in the denominator, so I multiply by 1 in the form of the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. Now I multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. That'll give me the square root of 70 over the square root of 7 squared, or if you like, 49. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 7 squared is 7. So we'll have the square root of 70 over 7. And again, I warn you, you cannot multiply this 7 into that 70. That 70 is like a prisoner in his or her cell who's not allowed to have any visitors. Really is like that. Numbers outside the radical cannot talk to numbers inside the radical. And that's the way it is. Now we get to something interesting for which we need conjugates. From here on out, it's conjugate city. Let me write that down. Now, nah, yeah, conjugate city. Woo, party. Okay. Notice that these fractions, these radicals, had just one term on the bottom and it did not have an X or anything like that. But now look what we've got. 4 over 5 minus the square root of six. Oh dear, what am I going to do now? There's a radical. Well, here's what you do, because there are two terms there. I am not going to multiply by the square root of six over the square root of six. Here's what would happen if I did. Excuse me. Okay, so that would be four times the square root of six over five times the square root of six minus six. Coffee does that. I've still got a radical, a root sign, on the bottom of the, the fraction. Oh, and did I tell you that's not allowed? Yeah, it's not. That's why we have to rationalize. That is, take away anything irrational. Take it out of the uh, denominator. So, you can see that this did not work. So I, I'm just going to kind of, yeah, depressing to see those X's. We're going to try again. 4 over 5 minus the square root of 6 times 1 in the form of the conjugate of the denominator. Yeah. The conjugate of the denominator will have a 5 and a square root of 6. But the sign will be the opposite. Then exactly the same thing has to go in here. Oh, 
like that. Okay, now. This will give us four parentheses five plus the square root of six over 25. Five times five is 25 plus five times the square root of six minus five times the square root of six minus the square root of six squared. So this is going to be four parentheses five plus the square root of six over these guys zero out. Five times the square root of six minus five times the square root of six is zero. And you're gonna have 25 minus six. The square root of six squared is six. So let's take an extra step and write it like that. And then I can see that um, you're expected to multiply, to distribute the four. Often you don't. So for the numerator though, you're going to distribute the four. So you'll have four times five is 20, plus four times the square root of six, over 25 minus six is 19. And there you have your answer. You want to go over these step by step when you're doing your homework, or maybe even before. Now this is elaborate. We're going to write it bigger. 5 plus the square root of 5 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 5. And no, you cannot cancel the square roots of 5. Why? Because this is one thing and this is one thing. This binomial does not match this binomial, so you can't cancel them. So give up that dream. In order to get these radicals out of the denominator, I'm going to have to multiply by one in the form of the conjugate of the denominator over the conjugate of the denominator. So this is how I create a conjugate. I take this term, the square root of two, that term, the square root of five, and then the opposite of the plus sign, which is the minus sign. And then to make this one, I have to write exactly the same thing on the top. This is just another form of one. And when you multiply this by one, you don't change it. You're not going to change the numerical value. You're just going to change the look. So, I'm going to multiply the tops together although I don't like the way I wrote that. Five plus the square root of five 
times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 5 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5. Once when I was a student, I was taking a test on this. And the first thing I did was cancel because they were exactly alike. And then when it got to the next step, I realized I was just back to where I was in the beginning. I hadn't accomplished anything. Felt really embarrassed. OK, let's multiply. We're going to have 5 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5. Okay. Are we having fun? I knew we were. All right, this is, now I'm going to distribute, 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 distribute. Five times the square root of two minus five times the square root of five plus the square root of five times the square root of two is the square root of 10. And the square root of five times minus the square root of five is minus the square root of five squared, or you could write 25 over. Do the same thing here. The square root of two times the square root of two, can we just say the square root of four? The square root of two times minus the square root of five is minus the square root of 10 plus the square root of five times the square root of two is plus the square root of 10 and plus the square root of five times minus the square root of five is minus the square root of five squared. Do not cancel anything up and down. Instead, Let's work out the top. 5 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5 plus the square root of 10 minus 5 with no radical over the square root of 4 is 2. Negative or how? Minus the square root of 10 plus the square root of 10 is 0. Minus the square root of 5 squared is minus 5. So this is going to be 5 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times the square root of 5 plus the square root of 10 minus 5 over negative 3. And we're not quite done. We're almost done. I'm taking that minus sign and pulling it out to the front right here. 
That's a really long minus sign. Five times the square root of two minus five times the square root of five plus the square root of 10. I'm so tired of writing that one line over and over again. But as soon as you start taking shortcuts, you could be in for a disaster. So this is safer, all things considered. So five plus the square root of five divided by the square root of two plus the square root of five equals negative that. Quite amazing. And we are done. We have, we have, there we go. We have added, added, added and subtracted, multiplied, multiplied, squared, and multiplied conjugates, yes. divided and rationalize the denominator when you have only one term on the bottom of the fraction. And we have taken a road trip to Conjugate City. Conjugate City! Yes, <clears throat> getting upset there. Too much coffee, yeah! All right, and so here were our conjugate problems. You need to practice this. Yes, you do. I always say it at the end of videos. Remember that you can can. Replay any part of the video you want. You can listen over and over again. I hope you listen once or at least look at the notes. You'll have both. I'll talk to you later, bye bye.